My ex-best friend is mad at me for being more involved in his son's life and stealing his family. We all went to the same high school together. Me, 28 meters, my ex-best friend Jason, and Isla. Jason and Isla got together right after we all graduated and they were in a relationship for over a year. But when Isla got pregnant, he ended things between them, kicked her out of their apartment and said he wasn't paying any child support. Isla was depressed throughout the whole pregnancy over the breakup and the fact that she would be a single mom, but her family's pretty wealthy so she wasn't going to bother him for help if he didn't want to. It pissed me off the way he was treating her and I kept asking him why he was being like that. Basically he was just mad at her for getting pregnant even though he refused to ever wear condoms. According to him, when her being on the pill should be enough and that was her job if she didn't want kids. He was being a real asshole about this whole thing and saying he secretly hoped she miscarried so he wouldn't have to deal with some kid knocking on his door in 18 years asking to be his dad. He moved cities before Isla gave birth without telling anyone except me and I didn't bother to keep contact. Isla gave birth to Isaac a month later. All of our friends and her family were there to support her except Jason. Nobody heard from him after that. I wasn't really around Isaac after he was born because I was working full time and going to school, but still kept in touch with Isla to see how she was doing. I was raised by a single mom myself so I knew it was a struggle even with her family helping out. Little by little I started spending more time with Isaac and buying him stuff. There were times that Isla would have a work emergency and asked me if I could watch him for a bit instead of calling a babysitter and I was always happy to help out. When Isaac got older I started doing more stuff like picking him up from school or going to his games, watching school performances, taking care of him at my place until Isla got off from work. Like things just progressed without really realizing it. I love Isaac like he's my own and he's told me many times he loves me too. Around two years ago I Isla and I realized we were developing feelings for each other too so we decided to go out on a date and have been together ever since. He didn't tell Isaac until we were together 10 months and felt like we wanted to be serious. It didn't change anything since I was already pretty involved in both their lives and he was happy that meant we got to spend even more time together when we all moved into a bigger apartment together 5 months after that. Isaac is now 8 years old and a few months ago out of the blue, Isla was contacted by Jason. She was pissed by the call too because he was actually angry at her. So one of Jason's aunt's kids also go to Isaac's school but are in different grades. He had no idea about that until we ran into her once back in January when we were dropping him off at school. She recognized me and we said hello. We only chatted for a bit. She assumed Isaac was my son and neither of us corrected her because it felt awkward explaining that this is the child her nephew abandoned. So we left it at that and I guess word got to Jason and since he knew Isaac's name, it wasn't hard to figure out that I was involved in his son's life. He apparently stalked our Facebook page pages and found all our family pics and stuff. For whatever reason, the fact that we were together and that I was the one taking care of his son pissed him off. He called her trash, not the actual word he used but you get the idea, for picking his own best friend to take care of his kid as a way to get back at him and then he later started giving me shit for breaking the broco door whatever. Saying stuff for swooping in and stealing his girl and his kid. It was so stupid and I was honestly embarrassed at the fact that this guy used to be my best friend. I told him he could have been the one involved in his son's life if he had wanted to and it's not my fault he feels the way he does. His behavior was seriously out of control and we had to block his number and his social media accounts. For three months we didn't hear anything from him again and thought he was done. But a few days ago Isla got a call from an unknown number and it was Jason. He told her he's going to a lawyer and is gonna try to fight for custody of Isaac since she was willing to spite him and he wants to show her he can be petty too. Neither of us know what exactly his end game is here and I don't think he does either. He just wants to be an asshole because for whatever reason me being involved in his son's life pisses him off the same son he didn't want to be involved with. It's all really confusing. Isla's worried because his dad does know some really good attorneys and we're both just worried for Isaac and how this is going to affect him. He knows he has a dad and that he just wasn't ready to be a parent so that's why he's not around. But he's never met Jason before in his life and with the way he's acting now, neither of us want him anywhere near Isaac. We're just really lost and not sure what we're up against here. It's hard not to worry about if he'll actually 
they go through with this or not. The only thing this dude is getting if he tries to go for custody after so long is a huge child support bill, legal fees, and supervised visitation that he'll never use. He blames her for getting pregnant, abandons his child, is MIA for 8 years, and has the audacity to be mad at her, cause obviously falling in love with and basically raising her son with you was all just a way to get back at him. I've never heard anything more delusional in my life, and now he wants custody of a kid he's never even cared to meet just to be petty. Who knows if this is something he'll actually do, or if he'll get enough satisfaction out of just hanging the possibility over your head to make you miserable. I don't think he has much to stand on in court, but a good lawyer would force you to fight it out and make things expensive for y'all and him in the process. I would document everything from here on out. Some lawyers do free or discounted consultations. Think it would definitely be worth it to at least talk to an attorney in your area and go from there. We still have all the TXTS he sent us saved in case we ever need to use them because they were multiple long ass angry rants and it's hard to tell whether they were tantrums or he was drunk. Speaking to lawyer will be our next step anyways. We want to find out if adopting Isaac without his consent will be possible once we're married since Jason never paid any child support and abandoned him. Just to make sure we don't spend the next 10 years worrying he'll try to do something again. Holy shit. First of all, what a piece of shit this guy is. Second of all, you sound like a great dude for looking out for Isaac and Isla like that. If anything he should be grateful to you for ensuring his son grew up with two loving parents. In my experience, absentee parents who swoop in years later and try to regain custody are rarely successful. Hopefully, if he decides to follow through, that'll be the case here. Ultimately, Legal fees are expensive, and I doubt he'll be willing to sink thousands or tens of thousands of dollars into gaining custody of a child he never wanted. I think if anything this is meant to cause you and Isla anxiety. I'm sorry this is happening to your family now up, and I hope his threats were nothing more than that. Really don't know what I saw in him as a friend honestly. But I hope he doesn't actually plan to go through with this. We were planning on getting married once it's safe to do so but if this is something he wants to fight over. The money we've saved up will probably end up being used for legal fees. I hope whatever lawyer he goes to reminds him that he has years worth of child support to pay if this is the road he wants to go down. So the minimum of monthly child support is $100. That means he owes roughly $9,600 in back child support if not more. Plus lawyers aren't cheap, I had a friend that had to spend $5,000 for a retainer. Then you have the fact that he upped and left for multiple years. It sounds like he's a bitter person that probably has some sort disorder. Bye. 18F, mom has been referring to my stepdad as my dad, and it's making me uncomfortable. When I was two, my parents had a very nasty divorce. It was bad for everyone involved. My dad got primary custody, and the last time I lived with my mom was when I was six. My parents hate each other, which I've had to deal with my whole life. After living with my dad my whole life, a couple weeks ago, I decided to move in with my mom and stepdad. It's been an adjustment, but we're all trying to make it work. One thing I've noticed, however, is that my mom has been talking about how much my stepdad likes being my dad slash being a dad again. My stepbrother moved out four years ago, and I really don't like it. He's not my dad. I have a dad who I love, who's still alive and in my life. How do I bring it up with her? Should I bring it up? Do I involve my stepdad? I would say if it is making you uncomfortable, then you should definitely talk to her about this, probably without involving your stepdad first. This. Explain to her that while you value your relationship with him, he is not your father, you already have a dad, her referring to him in that way makes you deeply uncomfortable, and you expect her to stop that nonsense. If she argues with you, explain to her that it is disrespectful to both you and him for her to put you two in that position, and if she continues, you will no longer accept it. Let her know that if she continues, you will reject it and will also stop referring to her as mom, since you are apparently now allowed to just call people whatever you decide to call them, independent of their actual relationships and how they feel about it. 
info, why did you decide to move in with your mother in the first place? Me and my dad's rental agreement ended in September and we had no place to live by ourselves, plus we had a bad fight where my dad said he thought I was unhappy with him and it might be better for me to live with my mom. I suggest you ask her, in a non-confrontational way, and in a private setting, why she keeps referring to him as your dad. Then you can say well I understand how you feel, but it's making me a bit uncomfortable. Maybe you could refer to him as my stepdad instead. Might be less confrontational than just outright saying you're uncomfortable, and hopefully the fact that you listened to her thoughts slash feelings will help her take yours seriously. I wouldn't involve your stepdad unless you need to. However, if your mom doesn't listen to you, then maybe a bit later have a sit down conversation with your stepdad and tell him what's happening, that you really appreciate everything he is doing for you, but it's making you feel weird that your mom is referring to him as your dad. Hopefully he understands and then you can ask him whether he would talk to her about it. Thank you. That's probably what I'll do the next time she does it. Just explain that he's not your father, he's your mother's partner. You two don't have a parent slash child relationship. Take it from me when I say when you are living under someone's roof you best have an exit plan when you stand your ground. Be prepared to move out if they do not take it well. The thing is, I don't. I'm a 12 hour drive away from my hometown and I don't know anyone here. I can't drive, and I don't really have any money. My crush rested her head, fell asleep, on my shoulder while holding my hand. Exclamation mark update. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark update. Exclamation mark. Dash. There is this girl that I like and she likes me too. Yesterday we held hands and she fell asleep on my shoulder at the end of the night after when we were outside she came in close to me and rested her head on my chest. How should I proceed now next day? Thanks in advance all advice is appreciated. Or, this makes me happy. Ask her out man. Your heart might beat a thousand beats a second and you might jumble your words, or everything will go smoothly, but if she's going to say yes, and I have my bets she will. She'll say yes even if you jumble your words, as long as you get it out of your mouth that you're asking her on a date lol. Good luck hop this is cute. Ask her out, everything is set, just do it. Last week I said I would go out with her and she said she would too but wants to make more time for me slash get to know me dot better, see how things develop. She feels comfortable with you and that's a great first step. Ask her out. On a date. Damn man. Can tell you are young. What I would give to have moments like this again. Enjoy these little things, they will mean the world when you're older. Oh man I will unliving way more in the moment than I ever was.